August 1939, the world stood still while in Europe a decision was made that would change the course of history for the Soviet Union and the entire world. Joseph Stalin, the iron fist of the communist empire, made a major miscalculation. On August 23rd, he signed a secret agreement with history's ultimate villain, Adolf Hitler. Hi, my name is Sebastian, you're watching Mistakes That Changed the World. The pact I'm talking about, known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, named after the foreign ministers who signed it, was more than just a piece of paper. It was a handshake between two brutal and dangerous dictators, a handshake that included a secret deal to carve up Eastern Europe like a Thanksgiving turkey. Trade deals, cultural exchanges and even military cooperation, it all looked friendly on the surface. But the whole deal was in fact a green light for a brutal invasion of Poland and the annexation of Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, parts of Romania and Finland. The headline was occupied by Poland. Hitler would attack from the west and Stalin, in a move later known as the backstab, would swoop in from the east, claiming a huge chunk of Polish territory for himself. This infamous agreement was at the heart of these invasions and it was in fact what set the stage for a horrific chapter in history, World War II. But was it really a mistake for Stalin? Let's dig a little deeper and see why this alliance between two devils would ultimately come back to bite the Soviet Union really hard. So why exactly did Stalin agree to this pact with Hitler? Well, there were a few reasons. First, the Soviets were still recovering from their rough and tumble with Finland and invading another country right then wasn't exactly ideal. Second, Hitler's fear of a two-front war, like the one that crushed Germany in World War I, was music to Stalin's ears. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact basically guaranteed the Nazis wouldn't attack the Soviet Union. At least for now. The ironic part is that this pact, meant to prevent a two-front war for Germany, ultimately led to their downfall. Because two years later, Hitler ripped up the agreement and invaded the Soviet Union anyway. Talk about a backstabber, backstabbing a backstabber. But let's not get too ahead. Back in 1939, with Russia out of the picture, Britain and France stuck in their policy of appeasement, basically trying to appease Hitler to avoid war, were left with no real allies in Eastern Europe. The US, officially neutral despite President Roosevelt's worries, wasn't ready to jump in either. So, basically, Stalin's deal with the devil left the door wide open for Nazi aggression. From Stalin's perspective, this pact with Hitler wasn't such a bad deal. Here's why. Stalin got to claim huge chunks of territory he'd always wanted. Today's Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic states and a slice of eastern Poland and Romania. Basically, he was advancing the Soviet Union's original borders by a whopping 200 kilometers, which meant that this land grab also created a giant buffer zone between Russia and any potential threats. Think of it like a safety blanket for the Soviet Union. By the way, it's something that we still see Russia doing today. At the same time, Stalin was worried that Western democracies might join forces with Hitler to crush communism. After all, they tried that once before during the Russian Civil War. And lastly, keep in mind that, as far as we can tell, Stalin genuinely believed he could avoid war with Germany altogether. This might sound crazy in hindsight, but it influenced all his decisions even after Hitler invaded. And I'm not exaggerating. After Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the full-scale invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, Stalin kept sending resources to Germany. He just couldn't believe the Nazis would play him for a fool. Historian Leopold Unger called the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact the most cynical act of World War II and for good reason. It shattered any hope of a united front against Hitler and forced Stalin to choose between his former allies from World War I and the ultimate villain. He chose poorly. This pact may have seemed like a strategic move at the time, but it ultimately backfired spectacularly. 
It paved the way for a brutal war on the Eastern Front and left a permanent stain on Soviet history. So, was the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact the biggest mistake of World War II? Historians debate that one a lot. There were definitely other blunders that had a massive impact on the course of the war. But what's even crazier is that Stalin saw this pact as just a game of real politic, basically a policy of screw everyone else, let's just get what we want. He thought Hitler was just playing the same game. Stalin was so convinced this pact would keep Russia safe, he completely missed the giant red flags waving in his face. So, to recap, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact gave Hitler the green light to invade Poland, which in turn triggered World War II. Trusting a deal with Hitler was a gamble that backfired spectacularly. It wasn't just a simple betrayal of Poland and Western Europe, it was the step that opened the door for a brutal Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union itself. And as I said, Stalin was so shocked by Hitler's betrayal that he froze at the worst possible moment. The consequences were devastating. Millions of lives were lost, half of European Russia endured Nazi occupation, and the Soviet Union's industry was crippled. All for a short-sighted agreement that indeed turned out to be worth less than the paper it was written on. If anything, this event can serve as a cautionary tale for leaders everywhere. Trust can be a powerful weapon, but misplaced trust can have disastrous consequences. So, what other historical decisions do you think were colossal miscalculations? Let me know in the comments downstairs. If you enjoyed this glimpse into one of history's greatest blunders, don't forget to like and subscribe for more explorations of history's chapters. Don't forget that I do have a Patreon page if you feel like you want to help this channel out. I'd like to thank my long-standing patrons, Dan and Lawrence Neal, for their continued support. In the meantime, I do hope to see you next time, bye.